When you last saw us, we were road tripping across the beautiful state of South Dakota for the first time. We visited two national parks, ate some delicious food, hiked in some of the craziest scenery, saw iconic U.S. landmarks, and explored different cities. We have made our way over 1,100 miles east to West Virginia, another brand new state for us. West Virginia is nicknamed the Mountain State because not only is the state home to many mountains and is the third most forested state, it's the only state completely within the Appalachian, er, Appalachian mountain region. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be exploring different regions of the state, trying local foods, hiking in the mountains, seeing different cities, learning some of the state's history, and conquering our fears. We are excited to check another state off of our list and can't wait to share it all with you. Welcome to West Virginia. So you may be wondering, how the heck did you go from South Dakota to West Virginia? But after a crazy busy August in Montana and South Dakota, we were just in desperate need of a break, just some time off, catch up on work, relax a bit. So we actually took a whole month off from vlogging. We went and hung out with some family in the Midwest for a bit and took full advantage of their <laughs> unlimited internet, hot showers, air conditioning, all the good stuff, all the things we don't really get in the van before heading east for the fall. Our original plan was to go to the New England area, but with some tight COVID travel restrictions, we decided that we should postpone it until next year. So our new plan is we're going to spend the next couple of months in West Virginia, North Carolina, and Tennessee before heading back to Texas for the holidays. And we're kicking it off in Fairmont, West Virginia, which is in the northern part of the state to try some very iconic West Virginia foods. Warning. Today is not going to be a healthy day, so don't <laughs> judge us. The first West Virginian food we're gonna try is a pepperoni roll. And if you Google iconic foods to eat in West Virginia, this is probably the number one thing you'll see in every single article. And basically what a pepperoni roll is, is it's a roll with either sticks or slices of pepperoni inside of it. And it became really popular when the Italian immigrants were working in the coal mines. So coal miners would work long, hard hours in the coal mines, so they needed something filling and simple to take with them for lunch. So an Italian coal miner named Giuseppe Arghiro would see all of his friends eating a stick of pepperoni in one hand and a roll of bread in the other. So he thought, why don't I just put these together? So he created the pepperoni roll. It became so popular that he quit the coal mines and started the Country Club Bakery in Fairmont in 1927. And you can basically find pepperoni rolls all across the state in grocery stores. I think gas stations are super Everywhere. popular, <laughs> but we wanted to come try it at the original spot. Okay, so just smelling this, it reminds me of like kolache bread in Texas and it they kind of look like it too. Oh man. It's still warm also. Yeah, they look so good. Oh, they, I guess they like bake them together because they're kind of... Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, these are big. So doughy and mm, like kind of stringy kind of dough. Oh yeah. Now that I think about it, it kind of is a kolache. There's the meat inside and then the bread but it's not as sweet as the kolache bread. But it's definitely like that Italian bread flavor, but this is really good. The uh, pepperoni inside is really, it's got a good spice. Uh, it just has a lot of flavor and it's just, this is just a good simple filling snack like you need in the coal mines. <laughs> and as you can see, the grease from the pepperonis kind of seeped through the bread. Oh my goodness, it's very, fluffy it's way bigger it's kind of like the size of a hot dog bun maybe yeah probably about the size of a hot dog bun it's simple and delicious it tastes just like what you think pepperoni inside of a, of a roll or a bun it's so good the bread's kind of like dense and then the pepperoni has really really good flavor it's nice and greasy so we've seen that some places do slices of pepperoni and some do these sticks kind of like you see here I kind of like the stick because it's a little bit more hearty. I wasn't sure if I'd like the slice concept or the stick better. Another thing we've seen, and I think the only thing that would make this even better, is gooey melted cheese on the inside. And I think some places do, but the original recipe does not have it, so Country Club Bakery is just doing it the simple way. But this is delicious. I mean, you can't really go wrong. <laughs>
Another very popular food here in West Virginia are hot dogs, but not just any hot dog. It's a West Virginian style hot dog, which is a hot dog, mustard, onions, sauce, which is basically just chili without beans and slaw. So similar to pepperoni rolls, they got really popular in the 20s and during the Great Depression because they're simple and cheap and easy to eat when you're working down in the coal mines. And then eventually they started adding more toppings on there to kind of beef it up. However, we hear there's this line that goes through West Virginia. It's the slaw and no slaw line. So in the north, slaw is not very common on hot dogs, but in the south, it's very popular to get slaw on your dogs. We hear in the north, they just focus a little bit more on the sauce aspect of the hot dog. So we're here in the north in Fairmont, so it's not really the best spot to get slaw on our hot dog, but we found a spot that does do it. So we're gonna try that. And then we also found there's a spot in town that's like an institution that does not do slaw, and we just had to try that. So we're gonna try both. All right, so first up, we are trying Jan's or Yans. We're not sure how to pronounce it. We were just in there. We should have asked them how, so we're sorry. But they do their dog with no slaw. And we hear that if you go in and you ask for ketchup or add the slaw on there, they're not going to do it. We also hear that this sauce on here is pretty dang hot. So you're supposed to get it with chocolate milk to cool the heat down. You can actually see. Yeah, you can see the, uh, pepper, the, the pepper seeds or, or whatever. The Yeah, looks pretty hot. <laughs> All right, this has pretty good flavor. The sauce is a little spicy. It's not killing me right now. I think once you get in the middle, you get more sauce in the bite. You'll be good. I kind of got a lot of bread on there. But the hot dog just seems like your regular old hot dog. Um, you can definitely taste the mustard. It gives it a little tang. The onions are in there. It's a good, nice little flavor combo. It's pretty good. I think if I go back, I'm going to need to get a couple more of them, though. <laughs> Uh-oh. So... When you bite into it and you get all the flavors together, I feel like the heat of the sauce is kind of masked a little bit by like the bread. It just kind of balances it out. But if you try that sauce by itself, I definitely feel the kick in my throat. And this hot dog is just super juicy. We have to admit, we have not, we, ha we got the hot dog, then we went and got the other hot dog, and now we're eating it. So it's not hot anymore and not as fresh as when we got it, but it's still really dang good, even when it's a little bit colder. But Oh man, yeah, I can see why people think that's spicy. You can see the seeds and stuff. There's definitely a kick, but I think all together, it's like the perfect heat level. I do like the sauce on there. And then you have to, like we said, you gotta wash it down with the chocolate milk. But yeah, we were talking with, uh, we think who the owners were in there. And it's an institution. They were telling us that it's been around since 1927. But don't try to go there on the weekend. They're only open certain days during the week and they close, we hear, when they sell out and it's cash only. So make sure you have some cash. Gotta try me some chocolate milk now. I just love chocolate milk. Mm. It's so good. It's like the best combination. It's the most random, but best combination ever. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> Stuff in her face over here. <laughs> So I don't know if we've said anything yet, but check out this picnic spot we have. This is Palatine Park up here, just uh, on the bank of, I'm not sure what river this is, the Monongahela, maybe, maybe not. Um, but yeah, this is sick. You got the river going through here, the bridge is over here, and then Yans or Yans, they're just, Yans behind or Yans tree. is just up there, yeah, they're behind just, the trees on the edge of the- They're just over yonder. <laughs> <laughs> Hot dog number two is from Woody's Restaurant, and as you can see, it has that creamy, like finely chopped cabbage looking slaw on top. There's some sauce in there as well. It's, uh, as we said, uh, we had to wait a while to eat this, so it's about to fall apart, I think, from sitting too long. But there's some sauce in there. There's the hot dog. There's mustard and onions as well. And we ordered our sauce medium here, but we hear that the yans or yawns, we're so sorry, that hot dog is like the spiciest you can find in the area. So we're expecting this one to be a little bit cooler. So there's a lot going on with this. It seems like a similar bun and wiener. So similar flavors there, mustard, onions there. And then obviously what the change here is the slaw. So adds a lot of flavor in there and it's kind of sweet. So it kind of adds like a spicy, sweet and salty kind of component here. I'm not a huge fan of sweet slaws, but it's good. It's good overall. It's definitely different than the other hot dog. I'd say the hot dog and the bun are 
pretty much the same, but where it gets really different, obviously, is the slaw. But the slaw is like mixing with the sauce, and the sauce is definitely nowhere near as spicy as the other one. And so it's kind of just hard to distinguish between the sauce and the slaw. It's kind of become one. The slaw adds a nice crunch to it, but to be 100% honest, I'm not a coleslaw fan at all. So I wasn't sure if I'd really like this. And it's good, but I definitely prefer mine without the slaw. Sorry if you're from West Virginia. I know that's probably like blasphemy to say, but they're both good but I prefer the Yans Yans one better. <laughs> We're not big hot dog eaters, but it was a lot of fun to try the local cuisine and different takes on it. But if you're from here, from West Virginia, and you have a favorite go-to spot, let us know what it is so others can try it too. For our final West Virginia food, we are gonna eat some biscuits. And so the history behind biscuits is that back many years ago, cornbread was really popular here in West Virginia because it was easy and cheap to make. But then people started to worry that cornbread wasn't healthy. So they started making these things called beaten biscuits, which are more like a cracker, but they were more expensive to make. So they're more like an upper class delicacy. But then as milling became more popular and flour was easy to get, people started making the fluffy biscuits that we know today. We are heading 30 minutes north to Morgantown to go to a West Virginia chain called Tudor's Biscuit World to get our biscuits. We typically don't really like going to chain restaurants, but everywhere we read to get the best biscuits, Tudor's Biscuit World was on the list. So we're gonna go give it a shot. Oh yeah. All right, we're not starting our day the homemade way, but we're continuing our day the homemade way. All right, Tudor's Biscuit World, here we go. This biscuit looks really good. So I think we read that all the biscuit sandwiches are named after some kind of sports, local sports, either team or person. This is the Huggy Bear. We had to look it up what Huggy Bear was, but apparently the basketball coach, Tom Huggins? Huggins. Huggins. I've heard the name, you know, watching Bob. Sports Center. No, Bob. Bob Huggins. Bob Huggins, that's it. I've heard the name, but his um his nickname is Huggy Bear. This bad boy is bacon, sausage, egg, and cheese with a beautiful looking biscuit. This thing looks super good. This thing is ridiculously good. I was looking at pictures of the place yesterday. I was kind of like underwhelmed because their pictures don't do this thing justice, especially coming for like a chain place. Like I said, we don't go do a whole lot of chains. We like to uh, do local spots, but man, once I got this thing in my hands, tasted it, super good. The egg, it seems like it's a real egg, cheese, American cheese, the sausage patty's good. The bacon's like awesome and crispy, but the biscuit, I mean, just like it's in the name is the star of the show. It's like crunchy, but like fluffy on the inside. It's one of the best biscuits, like, especially for a, a chain place. Like a fast food restaurant. Yeah, yeah. No. This thing is massive. I thought it was gonna be about half the size, but it's so tall. The biscuit has some good thickness to it. The top's a little bit thinner, but wow, it just, it smells like a really good sausage. That's the smell I get. It's just an awesome breakfast sausage. That biscuit is amazing. Like Adam said, the photos, like, it just didn't look like it was gonna be as good from the photos online, kind of like those like stock fast food photos that like McDonald's and all of them have. But this is incredible. The biscuit is so soft and like moist and wow. I could just eat the biscuit by itself. It's so good. That was a very delicious introduction to West Virginia. One of our favorite things to do when we go to a new place is eat, try the local foods. And even though we've had some of these things before, we've had hot dogs before, we've had biscuits before, it was still fun to try the local spin on things and just learn where it came from. And it was all really good, really filling. <laughs> and it was super cheap the pepperoni rolls were a dollar fifty each yan's hot dog was about three dollars with the chocolate milk woody's was 220 and the biscuits here 580 something for a little over a total of a little over ten dollars like, yeah like ten to twelve dollars with all of our combos and drinks yeah. and everything but that is a That's pretty a dang good deal <laughs> but we're going to be hanging out in this area for another day or so and then we're going to be off to see some nature which is where you guys will see us next our first West Virginia food is a pepperoni pe Peroni roll. <laughs> pepperoni roll. <laughs> we have a friend that really wants a hot dog. None for you, buddy. Sorry, dude. Give me a hot dog. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna come over here on the back side. Maybe they don't notice me. 
my buddy hope you find your dad <laughs> that's my favorite quote from a movie <laughs>